morning, everyone. Baldur's Gate. It's so good to see you joining in online and here in the room. A very blessed Sunday morning to you, or whatever time you are watching this, a blessed time to you. I know that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are bound together as an Aldersgate community, uh, whether we're here or far away and whenever we're watching. I have a question for you this morning, but before I give you the question, I want to remind you that at the end of the service, we will have a pastoral prayer made up of all the prayers that you have shared and the prayers that you put into the comments on Facebook. So go ahead and drop your prayer requests and say hello to those who are joining us online. The question for you today, agree or disagree, do you have your struggles in your life because you have a relationship with God? Do you have fewer struggles in your life because you have a relationship with God? And with that, Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Please join in standing and singing Shout to the Lord.
right, well, it's time for the children to come on down. And while they come down, I'm reminding you to drop prayer requests in the comments and also to let me know if you agree or disagree. Do you have fewer struggles in your life because you have a relationship with God? Hmm. Hmm. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good. It's nice to see each of you. I'm so glad. So um, when you woke up this morning, I wonder if you felt a little extra tired today. A little bit? Yeah, because maybe... Um, oh, good. You lost sleep. Well, you summarized it. Why, why did... Is that me? It's not. Okay. I will not move. Timmy, why did we lose sleep this morning? Because the clocks changed. I don't think that is the funniest thing that we do. Like, all of a sudden, we all agree that instead of 9.30 in the morning, yesterday was... Just bring me a different mic. Okay. Sorry, friends. We had such a mic. We had uh, so much mic trouble last week. Yeah, it was not working. Yeah. Now it's on. Now it's on. Check, check. Hmm. What are we doing? What are we going to do? About it. It's on. Check, check, okay. Oh, I promised that we did a sound check before church, and you know, that's okay. So we, we just established that we lost an hour of sleep last night, and I was saying, I think that's the funniest thing that we do, because yesterday, when we looked out the window and saw the sun exactly like this, everybody agreed that it was 9.37 in the morning, right? And this morning, we look out the window, is that right? Did I get that right, or backwards? We agreed that it was an hour, yes. Anyway, we all just agreed that the time changed, and everybody did it. And look, there's a room full of people here at church. Everybody just decided. Wouldn't that be funny if we said, I think it's lunchtime. I declare that it is noon right now. We should all just adjourn for lunch. Do you think we could do that? You know what? The thing is we could. If we were in charge of the whole world and we could decide things like that, we could say, okay, whole world, everybody is now at lunch. And people would say, okay, we're at lunch. Do you know that there's a country in the world that is super, super, super huge from east to west, which means they should have lots of different times because the sun is rising in one part of the country while it's still dark in another. This is China. But China says, we don't care. Everybody has the same time. And so everybody in China, in some places the sun will rise at 6 in the morning, maybe, and some places at 5, and some places at 9 because they say it's all the same time. Do you know what? Do you think that God has a clock? God does not have a clock. I think that God does not even have time. Isn't that interesting to think about? If God was here before everything and will be here after everything, if God is infinite, I think that God has no time. I think we made it up. Why aren't your minds blowing right now? Will you go like this? That's a big thought. I really think we made it up. Do you know what the most important time for God is? Right now. Right now. Because this is the only time we actually have. This is going way above Fia's head, by the way. If you're two, yeah, well, and actually, it's probably very much like being two. Is she two? Yeah. It's probably very much like being two. The only time that you have is right now. And so what God wants to know from you is, do you love God right now? Can you say yes? Just humor me. <laughs> do, you, do you feel that God loves you right now? Yes. That's the most important. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. That's the most important thing. 
That's the most important thing. You know, you might be a little worried about tomorrow because of school or something, or you might be worried about yesterday because something bad happens that's still making you mad. But the most important time that you have is right now. Does God love you? Yes. Do you love God? Yes. Good. All right. So go chew on that one. That one, some of the adults are going to be like, what? <laughs> it's a big concept, but I think it's true. I think that we made time, and God is outside of time. And the most important moment is now. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the sun that you created that helped us to invent time. God, we thank you that you are not bound by time and that you've given us this very moment to say that we love you. We do love you. God, protect these kids as they go forward into time, into the future. Um, protect them and bless them and help them to grow big and strong and healthy and loving you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we have a guest liturgist at the last moment. I'm going to tell you a story about our church. Uh, George Schofield was to be our liturgist today, and for those who know George, they know that he can fix almost anything. He can repair almost anything. And uh, someone arrived at church this morning with news that our good friend Joni has a broken water heater, and George said, please let someone else read the scriptures. I've got to go fix Joni's water heater. So that's where jo George is right now. Jan, thank you for picking it up here at the very last second. You're welcome. So, so now you do know that I'm not George Schofield. That's, that's a good thing. Okay. Okay. So this morning's scripture lesson is from Psalm, I believe it's Psalm 27. As you know, I'm doing this last minute. So. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an enemy besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent, and he will set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your service, servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me. God is my savior. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, sprouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will seek the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. This is the word of God. Thank you, Jan. All right. I need two hands to preach. I need at least one hand to preach, and so if I have to hold a mic, I need a stand. So that's what we're doing this morning. <laughs> we'll figure it out. If you are just joining us, we're so glad that you're here this morning. Uh, please drop your prayer requests in the comments down below. And um, 
the question of the day. Do you agree or disagree with this statement? You will have fewer struggles in your life if you have a relationship with God. Hmm. I'm getting some nods. How about, how about, give me some nods here in the room. I'm getting a no, I'm getting a yes. Okay, we're divided. The two with opinions. Okay, we're getting both, both. Put it in the comments. What do you think? We'll get there. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for your help. We thank you that in the very moment of now, the only moment that we have, God, that you help us. Thank you for blessing us, God, this morning with faith and with time to be here, to spend with the beloved community, to spend considering your word with intention in a special way, to hear music and prayers. God, we ask that you would use this time to strengthen us as your disciples, that you would allow us to reestablish our identity in you, and that you would send us from this place, from this time, stronger and better equipped for a world that so needs your love. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. So just a bit of prologue to this sermon and also a story about the Holy Spirit. I think I'm getting better at recognizing when the Holy Spirit is doing something. It takes a lot of practice and then it takes a little confidence, but you know, slowly, I'm, I've been working on this for almost 30 years, so I'm glad it's finally happening. But so this is how it works. When I, out the um, scriptures that I'll preach on. I sat down in January and I did this as a courtesy to Johnny so that he could pick the music out because I like Johnny and I wanted him not to be frustrated. So I said, I will pick all the scriptures that I'm going to preach on through the end of March. And I went through and I picked them out. And then as we went to design what we would be doing during this season of Lent, I was speaking with Deke Heimach and we had this wonderful idea for an art project. And Dee says it came from Skylar Helm, a senior in the church, a senior in high school in the church. And I said, I would love to do that. She said, let's do it on a Sunday morning, and we'll call it the face of God activity. And I said, that's brilliant. She said, it could be instead of the sermon. And I said, amen, right? Because it's always nice to have a, br a break uh, for me occasionally. So... I thought, okay, we'll do this beautiful art activity. I know on March 13th, I'm preaching on Psalm 27, but the next week I have to change it to something else because something about the face of God. So I look on Google, because where else would you go? I Google the face of God and um, get look for scriptures. And I thought, oh, this is a beautiful passage. I'll just plug that in. It comes from Psalm 27. The very same chapter in the Bible. I don't know how many chapters are in the Bible, but there's got to be thousands. And I picked the very same chapter of the Bible for next Sunday, too. And at first I thought, well, that's against the rules. You can't do that. You can't preach the same text two weeks in a row. And then I said, okay, Holy Spirit, yes, we will. So this is a setup sermon, two parts, for next week. Next week when we're going to engage in an art activity together, reflecting on this same psalm. So pay close attention. And if you're at home this morning, come here next week because it's going to be harder to do the activity from home. You can, um, but there we are. Okay. Oh my gosh, okay, the weather. Let's start with that. Very cold this morning. I have a way of being able to tell the temperature before I look at the house thermometer. Sometimes it's by standing near the wall in the bathroom that's not insulated. That was my first hint this morning. We have one bathroom that's the old part of the house before they used installation, and that wall gets very cold. And I was like, oh, is it cold? It was just warm. What's going on? And so I look out the window at my most trusty indicator of the temperature my rhododendron plant. I don't know if you have the, you know the rhododendrons, this, the leaves are in a circle, right? They're like fingers in a circle. Those beautiful bushes, they put out those beautiful flowers in the spring. We have one right out here. And the rhododendron, when it's nice weather, you know, nice full leaves, and the colder it gets, the more the leaves curl and sag. And so if it's below freezing, this rhododendron's leaves are like this. I looked out, the rhododendron, thumbs down. I was like, oh, it's really cold. I tell this story for Ruth because she's a gardener. I'm glad to see you, Ruth. You know about the rhododendron. Is that how you tell temperature, too? Yeah, you look at that. Yeah, that's how you know. So cold. New England weather back and forth all week. People complain when it gets cold because it's just been warm. People complain when it snows because it's just been warm. 
when is it going to get warm and stay warm? But on Thursday morning, I came downstairs. I get up just before 7 to start making lunches for my kids. And I came down. The sun is nice and high because the clocks hadn't changed yet. Nice and high, 7 in the morning. And I looked out at my backyard and saw the most beautiful snowfall. Do you remember Thursday morning? At 7, it was still, it was still, it was not windy. And all of that sticky, wet snow was sticking to every single branch of every single tree. And the sun was coming over, uh, up and over, and lit up the top of the trees, but not yet the backyard. And the sun was slightly yellow and orange. And I just... It took my breath away. I think that I might have even made an audible sound, like, wow. And I was so stunned, and I, you know, I have this routine. You know, I can, I can crank out those lunches without barely thinking by now, right? So I go get my cutting board. I'm starting to pull the bread out of the fridge. And my eye just kept going back to the backyard. I have a rule that I don't touch my phone until after my morning devotions which is gonna be like at least 45 minutes from now. I broke my rule. I went and got my camera because it was so stunning. And you know, every minute, every 30 seconds, it would change because the sun was rising and the light was changing. And so there I am trying to make lunches just transfixed by the view out of the window. Like, thank you, God, look at this. It must have taken me 15 minutes longer to make lunch because my eyes just kept going out the window to see what was happening in the backyard. And then about 8 o'clock, the sun started to hit those branches and the snow started to fall. And within half an hour, the snow was gone. It's on the ground. Just beautiful. That experience of being entirely absorbed in something so wonderful is probably with all due respect to the musicians, the most authentic experience of worship I've had this week. That came close, that's good. But just to be like, wow, that is beautiful, thank you, God. And then to keep looking and keep looking. I just wanna stay here, I wanna capture this moment. Most authentic experience of worship this week. I know you've experienced moments like that, and maybe it is. During the, a lot of times, for me, it's during music. Music has that way of helping me just be so present in the beauty right now and, and connected to God at the same time. To have God in mind, to be able to be grateful, full of gratitude for this moment and this beauty. What else? What, what else does that for you? Can you share? I have some ideas, but when else have you been like, whoa, that's awesome? Anyone? Another one is looking at a baby, for me. A baby that's not mine. <laughs> Someone, else's baby. Someone else's baby. A little tiny, especially when they're really, really little. Just still, if they're sleeping, you know, you could just stare at that forever. And of course you're saying, thank you, God, what a miracle that is. Right? Looking at a baby. Maybe, um, you know, in your travels, if you saw a new... Um, place that you'd never seen before and thought that was awesome. Sometimes even seeing things that are man-made, like huge bridges do it for me. I don't know why. My dad is a civil engineer. Maybe that's why. But if I look at a huge bridge, wow, God, thank you. I can't believe you've made us so that we can make things like this. That's incredible. We have these moments of authentic worship of, of just absolute presentness from time to time, and they hit us like a gift. That's part of the reason that I love this psalm, Psalm 27. And maybe it was familiar to you too, especially those opening lines, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Those might be familiar to you, but I'm going to share you my favorite part of this verse. I think it's verse 4. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. 
that experience. I want that moment of wow, that presence of God, that beauty of God. So I've always thought of this psalm as a really as one of the most beautiful psalms that there are. And then I studied it. <laughs> it is beautiful, but there's a lot going on here. This psalm occurs in two sections. And it occurs first as the psalmist stating a bunch of things the psalmist knows about God. I will probably lapse and say he, the psalmist, okay, I'm sorry, I am of a certain age. Maybe it's a she, probably because of the time it was a he. It applies to he's and she's, okay? It applies to us, the psalmist. The psalmist starts out by ascribing attributes of God, remembering who God is, speaking maybe to us. I know who God is. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is my strength. Um, And then telling us, the one thing I ask of the Lord is to spend more time with God. Okay, so the psalmist is speaking to a human audience. The Lord keeps me safe um, in his dwelling during times of trouble. He will hide me in the shelter of his tent. So the psalmist is remembering the characteristics of God, telling the community about the characteristics of God. And this is where these beautiful words come and why I, I thought of the psalmist just so comforting and so beautiful and thought, oh, I just wish I could be like that psalmist and like, like be like Zen person, like always in meditation in the presence of God. That's astonishing. Like they're awesome. They must live a really blessed and wonderful life. But then the psalmist starts talking to God, and I want you to hear how it changes. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful. Answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You've been my helper. Do not fear or forsake me, God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. How is the psalmist feeling actually in their life situation? They've given us some beautiful things about God. But where does that prayer come from? They are really in distress. They're afraid that they're feeling God's face turn away from them. God's face. That's the activity next week. That's why I found this psalm. Okay. They're afraid that they're feeling the face of God turn, that the mercy of God might go away. They're scared And if we look a little higher up, he's described, you see, he, she, she, the psalmist, described (laughs) the current situation. When the wicked advance against me, though an army beseech me, though a war break out against me, this person, this writer very well may be in the middle of a war writing this psalm. They are not meditating on some peaceful mountaintop. And yet somehow they have been able to find peace and comfort. I wonder if that psalmist, let's say the psalmist, she, is in the middle of a war. We have too many people um, in this world who can identify with that right now. And I'll tell you, when I first read this, that's what hit me was the current wars that we're hearing of. Let's say that they are sitting in the middle of a war and feeling surrounded on every side, and maybe their father and their mother have forsaken them. And they're feeling alone and frightened and wondering if they're going to live. I wonder if that psalmist um, would feel like they were living in unprecedented times. Do you remember, like, in the beginning of the pandemic, there were, like, two phrases that got overused very, very quickly, and one of them was, in an abundance of caution, right? You just hear it everywhere. You're like, stop with the abundance of caution. And the other one was, in these unprecedented times. I was watching the news, like, two days ago, and they were talking about, I don't know, war in the Ukraine and the global supply chain and trade and the economy and inflation and gas prices. And they're like, in these unprecedented times. And I thought, wait a minute. You were just saying unprecedented times two years ago. Oh, no, come on, Mike. About two years ago for something else. Like, are we always in unprecedented times? And then I realized, yeah, you know what? I think we are. I think we are. We always fail. You know, wouldn't it be nice if we could go back to the early 90s when everything was precedent? Wait a minute. No, it wasn't. 
Wouldn't it be nice if we go back to the early 80s when everything was present? No, shoot. What about the early 70s? Ah, oh, darn it. When was everything precedented? When was it all known? When did we get a problem that we're like, oh, I've seen this one before. This is totally precedented. It's no big deal, right? When we say things like unprecedented times, I think it shows the um, mm, mm, narcissism, perhaps, that we have naturally as humans that we're like, Oh, but we've never seen a problem like this before. I mean, March of 2022 caps all the problems that the world has ever seen, and this one is unprecedented. This is the biggest one. I'm going to use a not exactly accurate and also not at all biblical turn of phrase, but I think it's much more like same poop, different pile with the problems that we have. Right? Oh, thank you. Okay. It, okay. I'll say it again since it took a minute. Same poop, different pile. You've got me? Right? I'm preaching, so I'll keep it that way. Right? Like, we all, we're in the middle of a situation and we're like, oh, but this is the worst. This is the hardest. This is the most difficult. I have no idea. I, the world's probably going to end. Right? Like, and I, I don't mean to make light of it, but we do that all the time. We were doing it two years ago about the pandemic, and yet here we are. And now we're talking about another unprecedented time. And here's the psalmist 2,600 years ago, very likely feeling that they are in the middle of unprecedented times. That might just be us. You know, the thing is that the problems that we're confronting in the world, the things that are surrounding us and that we're seeing is so overwhelming may be the state of the world. That may just be the state of the world. That may be the same as it's ever been. And so that we're not sitting here saying, if only this problem could be fixed then we'd be back in precedented times. Then everything would be peaceful. Then everything would be solved. Maybe not. Maybe in two more years, oh, I would love to say what I, has happened by two more years by now, from now, but I won't. But there'll be another problem, and we'll be in more unprecedented times. Maybe it isn't the problems, but it is what we are doing in the middle of them. It isn't the struggles, it is what we are doing in the middle of struggle. And that's what leads me to realize the real beauty of this psalm. It's not the gorgeous turns of phrase, of which there are many, but it is the intention, it is the posture of the psalmist, that in the middle of the war, she is actively looking and desiring for that beautiful presence of God. That thing that is always available to us right in the now. The thing about the presence of God is that when I was looking out the window at that snow, I was completely inattentive to time. I wasn't thinking about time. I was just looking at a beautiful thing. I wasn't looking at time because I was almost late with Eva's lunch because I was so busy staring out the window. I wasn't thinking about what I'd heard yesterday that upset me, and I wasn't thinking about what challenging thing I had coming forward. I was just in the beautiful moment in the presence of God. And that is always available to us. This psalmist with intention is saying, I want to be fully present with you right now, God. Show me your face I want to be in your temple, right? That can be like allegorical or metaphorical or something occult, it, right? I just want to be with you. No matter what's going on around me, give me that moment of beauty so that I remember who I am. Give me that moment of peace so that as I go back out into the world, I'm stronger and I'm more assured. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. That is available to us every day of our life. It is available to us now, the moment that we have. To answer the question, do you have fewer struggles in life if you have a relationship with God? You know, of course, now it depends upon your definition and this and that. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. The struggles of the world are going to be the same around you, but your 
navigation of those struggles, your attitude, your heart posture, your peace is different because you intentionally seek and cultivate the beautiful presence of God. All right. Next week, we get to make that into art. Is that going to be cool? Yeah. I am not an artist. I'm so excited for Skylar Helms' idea that got me out of my left brain. It's going to push us all into the realm of art. So uh, if you can come in person, please do next week uh, for a hands-on activity to talk about this beautiful presence of God. All right. Good? Yeah. Amen? Sure. Okay. Amen. Was I done? Yes. I was done. Okay. All right. <laughs> and Rachel, you are an artist. You are an artist.
Thank you, band. Okay, uh, so last call on prayer requests, dropping into the comments. Those will come to me in just a minute. We have a couple announcements. Uh, first, there is a link for the offering that uh, has dropped into the comments. There's an offering plate here out in the foyer for people who brought their um, donations. And a lot of you are on, like, repeat, subscribe. Um, was that automatic giving uh, towards the church? Thank you for that as well then you can be here or there or anywhere and uh, your support comes through and we just we appreciate that so very much um let's see ooh 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 okay 2 weeks from today thanks Gigi um, two weeks from today is a super Sunday. Uh, about once a month, we have a special missions focus uh, during the worship service, and then after we stay for lunch and like some sort of education and service project. Uh, in two weeks from now, we are going to be collecting supplies uh, for flood buckets, for cleaning kits, for people uh, to be stored so that when there is a natural disaster of some sort locally or regionally, these cleaning buckets are sent out immediately. They're already in storage. They go out, and people can start to uh, clean their homes. This is through the United Methodist Committee on um, Relief, uh, UMCOR, and they give us very specific instructions about what to put in these five-gallon buckets, all different cleaning supplies like gloves and scrubber brushes and this type of thing, but not that, whatever. There is a Sign Up Genius link, because it can't be like, uh, please just bring soap. You, you have to sort of do what they ask you to do so that they know what's in every, bas in every bucket. We're going to make five flood buckets together as a church. So there is a Sign Up Genius. Please go take a look. We have two weeks to do that very specific shopping. Um, and I think it'll be really great to assemble five of those, and then in June I will take them down to where that they can be put in storage for the next unprecedented time that comes before us. That's two weeks. So look for that. Uh, in the link, it says AUMC cleaning buckets. That is the sign-up genius. Um, I'm going to make an announcement, and by way of that, do the celebration of thanks. The reason the people in the building are happy they're here today is because tomorrow is March 14th, which in numbers is 3.14, perhaps, which is the same as pi. Have you all heard of pi day? Pi day? Well, my mom, who loves great puns and loves pies, said, I think that we ought to celebrate Pie Day at Aldersgate. So she has made six. Six homemade pies are sitting on the back table out there. <laughs> yeah. And um, she's, if I say so myself, a very, very good uh, pie baker. So uh, please avail yourself of this special Pie Day treat. And mom, you get the celebration. And thanks. One more round of applause. <laughs> That's two weeks of thanking my parents for celebration and thanks. You guys are done for the year, all right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Please keep doing good things. <laughs> oh, they also haven't forsaken me, like the psalm says. Thank you for that. Yes. All right, so stay for a piece of pie. Um, I think that is all I have by way of announcements. Huh? Okay. Oh, I need more hands. Thank you for sending in your prayer requests. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. God, we thank you for the gift of your presence right now, knowing that now is really only the time we have, the only time we have that the past is behind us and the future has not come. But now you are with us. Now we love you. And now you, we know that you love us. Thank you for that. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who modeled this ministry of present moment as he walked on this earth, God. God, you know our community. You know the prayer requests that rest in our hearts, even the ones that were not spoken aloud. And so we ask, God, that we would not just pray these prayers and then run away and forget it and, and not pay attention, but that we would pray these prayer requests and then look to see what you are doing in response. God, help us to be faithful. We mention to you those for whom we're concerned. First and always, we mention to you those struggling with or in recovery from addiction and those with mental illness, depression, and anxiety, God. We ask for wholeness. We continue in prayer for Bob Kingsley's sister, Carol, 
and her cancer treatments and for her husband as well, caring for her. We also continue praying for Marie Patrice Mass, uh, Marie LaRose's friend in hospice care. We continue in prayer for Eli Spicer, healing up after uh, being hit by a car. God, we are mindful of the people of Ukraine uh, for the tremendous spirit and gifts you have given them and the great toll that they are suffering. God, we think especially of those who are displaced, the children in particular, and ask that you would bring mercy and grace and help. We ask for wisdom for world leaders as we navigate this very, very tricky situation. God, we pray for Ray Pitts, Rob Wilkinson's mother, for healing after a heart attack and for our district superintendent, Wee Chang's mother, who has breathing problems. God, we pray for Alana Davies' niece, Julie, who's been diagnosed with breast cancer, and for all the members within Sarah LaMonica's family with medical issues. God, we pray for those who have been forced to move to a new country, those maybe leaving the Ukraine, but we remember Afghanistan and those around the world. God, we pray for middle schoolers and the, the weight uh, that they carry, God, as growing young adults, God, that you would just give them strength and self-confidence. Let them know that you love them. We pray for Annie Berkeley's Uncle Jim on his recovery from surgery. And God, uh, we thank you uh, for hearing these prayers. There are many joys among us today. Uh, God, we celebrate uh, encouraging numbers, progress in, for, in COVID, uh, in the United States at least. Uh, we thank you again for the inspiring courage of the Ukrainian people, and we pray for miracles uh, in that situation. We praise you for the warm-up run of the breakfast, the first one in two years yesterday, uh, for the crew that ran that and for just being able to do that again, uh, help us to build, build strength into that program and maybe return to it in full. We celebrate the life of Jan Condry's family member, Deb Roy, who passed away last Wednesday, God, and ask that you comfort her family, as well as uh, the family of Jay Gurry after Jay's brother passed last week. God, uh, we thank you uh, and celebrate that uh, Deanna Costantino was accepted to Utah, Utah State for college, and we celebrate Noah Spicer's friends, Liam and Anna, who were married yesterday in Ohio. Uh, we're glad to hear that John Meredith's friend, Stacy, is having success in her cancer treatment. And finally today, God, we thank you for Wes and Anna's second anniversary of dating and ask that you continue to bless them with great friendship uh, for, for many years and give them health and happiness. Oh, we also thank you, God, uh, for baseball coming back, Lord. We thank you that uh, that was successfully uh, negotiated and the players can get back to doing what they love. God, you've heard our prayers. Now we ask that you would uh, hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, uh, Facebook, for hanging in during, I think, sound difficulties this morning. We promise we are working on it, um, and hopefully that will be improving soon. All right. Johnny. Thank you. Let's all stand and lift our voices high, singing Sweet Hour of Prayer. <laughs> 